it's time for round two of the tat and I have a few items here that I've picked up over the course of my brief ownership of the Maestro that I want to put in the car. This one is more for looks than anything else. It's, as you can see here, an old security system. And uh, I remember variations on this sort of thing back in the 90s and people were constantly being annoyed by them because they were constantly going off for seemingly random reasons. Uh, so they didn't last very long. Now this one is incomplete, it's just the sensor and the cable. The siren isn't actually present. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to mount that yet. We'll figure that out later. I've got an early sat-nav system and this one has a sticky pad on so you can mount it on your windscreen or your dashboard. Amazingly these are still available brand new and this one is a new one but it's very very close to what I remember them looking like. Some people will remember the old Atlantic 252 back when it was a music station and not a sports station. One of the Weeples that we made, there's a video on those. I'll pop a link up over there and you can make your own of those. They're very easy to do. Some wiper boots that somebody salvaged off another maestro and sent me. I'm sorry I have forgotten your name. Same with this one here. It's been that long since I actually got these. Uh, I'm afraid I've lost the details, but if it is you, do pop in the comments below and shout up. I was quite excited to get some of those because they're hard to find now. Travel suites, an absolute must for any 90s car. The, the number of journeys where mum would be passing us some sweets to the back seat and uh, these things would just be full of icing sugar in the bottom. I like that this one still has the original price sticker on from... Well, I don't, I don't know where that is. Maybe you know where that is. It's got a little prancing horse and THF. Maybe that was a service station or something. And one of these. This is a steering wheel wrap. In red, obviously, because the car is red. And, uh, yeah, it's been a long time since I've fitted one of these. So we'll see how we go. Because I have got a better steering wheel. This is another one from Peter. And it doesn't have that horrible twisty twisty thing at the top. This is all nice and secure. It does have a few little minor marks on it. But not a big deal for me. The cover will deal with that. And that will just feel a bit nicer on the car. For whoever ends up with it after me. As I've said in the last few videos. And probably by the time you see this. The car has already gone on to a new home. I am selling the Maestro. This is part of what I want to do with it, but I've reached the point where I've done what I want to do with the project. It's time for it to be enjoyed by somebody else. I remember one of the problems with these is often getting them to stretch around the steering wheel, and this is quite a chunky wheel. These are normally for much skinnier wheels than the Maestro has. And uh, I fell foul of one of the common problems. Because this is very stretchy and perforated, sometimes a piece comes off. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because it came off on the back over here and I think I can actually work with this. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. I may even be able to glue this back together or lace it in. So I'm going to see if I can do it. If I can't, I can't. No big deal. Now, it's important when you do these that your bonded in cord on here uh, some of them don't have a bonded in cord, some of them it is separate, but this one's a bonded in one. But put that to the bottom of the steering wheel so it's aligned with your bottom spoke. Because that's the bit of the wheel you're less likely to be handling when you're driving. And if you can, i just notice this is a bit off centre, spend a little bit of time just shuffling it, getting it all aligned nice before you lace this up. Now of course these days there are easier ways of doing this, you can just buy a fitted cover and you don't have to go through all this effort and the idea basically is you start from the front here you go around the wheel and you thread through these little holes however you see fit 
and then I tend to go through, I ignore all the many perforations because this also, all the perforations on these lines is for how thick your steering wheel is so you can actually lace this up. This is about as thick as you can do one of these so I shall be going through the very last hole on each section. So just follow whichever line you've chosen of dots. Make sure your cord is not twisted, if possible. And you pull it down and then go again. I'm going to do this off camera, figure out what works best on this steering wheel and I'll bring you back when it's finished. That took a bit longer than I had hoped. I had partial success gluing this torn section on. I did think it might be a little bit tricky to do because with it under tension it's going to want to give way. But I got enough of it stuck back together that I could get the lace through. That will hold well enough for as long as this needs to hold. I just used super glue for that. This is Slightly different material to what I remember. I remember these being a lot more plasticky. This is more like um, some sort of foam that it's made out of. Anyway, we've got all the lacing in. We've got our little bit at the end here, which we'll tie off in a minute. But the next thing to do is we need to take out the slack on this so that we have the best chance of getting a nice tight fit. Don't pull too tight on this cord. It will snap. All you're doing is just pulling each loop and feeding it around the wheel. Now once this has been through a few hot and cold cycles in the car, it should shrink down a little bit as well and uh, it should do a lot better further down the line. You can see there's quite a bit of slack here. You're not looking to pull this so tight that it cuts into the wheel because that will cut the cover as well, which obviously you don't want, it's quite fragile, as I have learned. But this is what helps secure it in a way that the modern type of this, where it's just an elasticated ring, doesn't. These don't actually move around on the wheel once they're in, because the laces go around the spokes on the wheel, and that prevents it from actually moving. And they also tend to grip the material a little bit better, these are designed for much older style, skinny, hard wheels. They're not really designed for this sort of application. Uh, the Maestro wheel is, is a bit on the chunky side for one of these. But once you've done that, you just keep easing the fabric round and then you do this a couple of times if it'll let you. It looks like I'm only just going to get this second round. And it just helps snug everything up, give you a slightly smarter finish. Right. And the other end of the cord here, there isn't really any slack to take out because it's only making one circuit there. But ideally, you wouldn't have this here. This steering wheel is so big, um, it, it's such a thick steering wheel, that's not going to close up. That's just going to be how this looks. I genuinely don't think that we can get enough tension on this to do it. Yeah, I've got nothing left to pull through there. So this is the front, this is the side that you see and that is perfectly fine. On the back you can see where the repair is there. It's on the bottom so when you're driving it shouldn't really be a problem because normally your hands are up in the top half of the wheel. I know, I know, you turn the wheel around to turn corners and things but just when your hands are resting on it I don't think that's going to be an issue. Our next job is just to tie off the cord. There are a lot of ways of doing this. Everybody has their own preference. This stuff is not the nicest stuff to work with, <laughs> I will be honest. But I'm just putting a granny knot in there. That's all that's really needed. And the loose ends you can just shove back through into the cover. 
and that just keeps them out of harm's way. For the routing on the cord, I've come out above the cover, through the first hole, back through the second hole, all the way around the steering wheel rim, and then back in the second hole, out the first one, over the top of the cover, and round to the next set of perforations. And you just spiral that cord all the way around the rim until you've done the whole thing. If this was a skinnier steering wheel, there would have been more than enough cord to do this. As it is, um, there was plenty to do this one. This is now ready to go back on the car, and that will replace the standard plain one that is currently on there. First thing I want to put on are these wiper boots. I've had to take the aerofoils off first because these need to go on to the arm, these sit down here. But I can't do that with these attached. These should just slide on. That was a bit fraught. Here is just getting over the hook part of the arm. Oh, there we go. Crikey. <laughs> now then, pop the wiper back on. I do not remember these being this hard to do. Goodness me. Maybe they weren't when they were new. Right, that's one on. <laughs> we just repeat that for the other side. I've learned from the other one, so I'm going to put some lubricant inside this one to begin with. Makes it a little bit easier, but not much. Good luck ever getting these off again. Now then, I will have to put the aerofoils back on with some cable ties because magpies keep trying to pull them off. I'm not going to say it looks better, I'm just going to say it looks right. That's the whole point here, is to just accessorise this as it might have been uh, if it had crashed through a Halfords in about 1994. So we've still got the sports flaps doing their job, and the earth strap, which 
is about as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike. The keep your distance sticker, which is great for people to tailgate you to read what it says and then back off. And I think I've got a spare aerofoil I might just throw on the back, just because I can. And of course we've got the door buffers, which are actually useful on this car. And there's a few more bits and pieces to go. I think we'll install the sat nav next. There's a little rock chip just on the windscreen here. It's outside the swept area. Uh, so I think we'll cover it up with this. Wasn't a problem on the MOT, so I'm going to assume it's perfectly fine. First job is some isopropyl alcohol. This just makes sure that the sticky pad is going to stick. Just in case there's anything on the glass here. Sometimes you get stuff through the vents and that sort of thing. This did come with a sticky pad on the back, but unfortunately it had the glue had dried up. So I'm using some number plate sticky pad here, which should be fine. This weighs less than the number plate. And if it's not, we'll just use something else. You can see, because this is a, a floating thing in here, it's always the right way up. So that's a fun little doodad. I do have, I do have a better dashboard to go in to replace this, but it's not fitted yet. But let's pretend it is, because a little weeple is going to live just in there, just under the sat nav. That's clearly what Austin Rover intended that little spot to be for. What next? Oh, do you know something that we don't have anymore that we used to have? Tax discs. And I found this one, which, yeah, it's, it's just, it's kind of amazing in its own way because it's, well, let me show you. So for those, who might be too young to remember tax discs, which is not something I thought I'd ever say. Um, they were a little piece of paper that you put in your window that showed that your tax was paid on your car. And you had to make sure you went to the post office and got a fresh one. And you could buy six months or 12 months. Most people bought 12. And it used to be when you sold your car that the tax went with the car. So it used to be a selling point. Whereas these days, of course, it doesn't. When you sell the car, that's it. And you don't get anything back. But I found this one online and it comes with full instructions on how to install it, which is lovely. And um, it's just perfect for this car. Faux leather effect, white plastic, and this big, I don't know, who bought these? Who, who bought this? Um, on the back, there is a big sticky pad. I don't know whether this is still good, we'll find out. And it's hinged. And the idea is you put your tax disc on this side, because this side sticks to your windscreen. And when it's in, you just close it, and that keeps your tax disc safe and on display. And we'll put this in the bottom left-hand corner of the windscreen on the passenger side, uh, because that's where they used to be. So uh, let's find out if this actually goes and uh, sticks on. If not, I'll have to make a new one of these. Just as with the driver's side, we'll give it a quick spritz of some alcohol. There was a Maestro Montego owner's club sticker in this corner. Uh, which I've shifted to a back window because it would be in the way otherwise here. I was quite surprised because it's not a peel and stick type, but it did actually tolerate being peeled and stuck back on. Ooh, that's still sticky. Let's make sure we get it the right way round. And that will go just there. It's funny, I spent time taking these out of cars uh, over the last couple of years, so it does feel a bit strange putting one back in. 
Now I believe somewhere in the history file I do have a tax disc for this car from a few years ago. But I have a better idea. Now, if you, like me, are in a position where you can no longer get a tax disc because they've been abolished, all you need to do is make a little note to put in your window. And I think I've made this too small, but we'll find out. Yes, I've written that just a little bit too small. Now make sure you don't take any care at all when you actually make this fit in the holder because that's more authentic. So there's our lovely new tax disc holder installed in the car. And so we don't get in trouble, they know that we would put a tax disc in there but it's in the post. Now you might laugh, but people did actually used to do this. Not often, and some people did it because they genuinely had one in the post, and some people did it because they didn't. Anyway, that's uh, the front end bits and pieces. And you can see the, the little compact sat-nav unit over here. And it's just where there is a little stone chip there. So that's no longer a problem, and it's not obstructing the view. Fuzzy dice, of course, that we made in another video, so uh, do check over here and there'll be a little card popping up for that one if you want to make your own. And I guess we should now fit the steering wheel because then I can get rid of this. It shouldn't do that, it's, it's kind of horrible. Um, I will keep this steering wheel with the car for the new owner in case they want it for whatever reason. This has been with the car since it was new, so that's got 183,000 miles on it, basically. Um, the ultrasonic kit, I'm struggling to find a location, but it wedges in there just right, so I think that's where that's going to live for now. It's, um, it screws down and I don't really want to screw it onto the dashboard. Um, the new dashboard that's going in is in pretty good shape. I don't want to be putting fresh screw holes in so That can live down there for now um, And if I find a better place, I'll find one, but it just looks About right to be honest. It, it looks about right in that little cubby and the one below is where I keep my choke pegs uh, That's that's these by the way don't get too excited because It holds the manual choke out because it doesn't always stay out on its own Let's be honest, you're all jealous of my leather grain finish hinged clip action flap. What a thing. What a thing. I believe I've covered this in a previous video, just in case. To get the steering wheel off, the first thing to do is very carefully put your screwdriver in between the squidgy bit of the steering wheel and the hard plastic centre cap and prise that out. It has two little wings on it that help hold it in place. Then there's a rubbery black plasticky sort of cover on the nut. Oh, it's a bolt rather, uh, to hold the steering wheel in. This is our size. Now then, don't undo this all the way. You want to leave a little bit of thread in there. 
I'm working on the assumption you like your teeth. All right, so it's, it's loose and we've got a bit of a gap. Now you need to give it a wiggle. Until you hear that clunk and that's it coming off the splines. Now you can finish undoing the nut. The bolt rather, it's usually a nut. I don't know why it's a bolt on this one. And I'm gonna to have to remember orientation because it didn't come off straight. Refitting is reversal of removal. The exception that we don't have that rubber cover Seated. Wind your bolt back in. Oh, I should have explained. The reason that you leave the bolt slightly loose like that is to prevent the steering wheel from coming off all at once and smacking you in the face. It's a lesson you learn two or three times before it settles in. You want to do this up to some torque. Click. Put your little grommet back on. And then pop your centre cap back on. And there you go. One wheel replaced. Doesn't look better, but it looks right. This one's easy to locate, and it's one that's just not gonna be on show. I'll just chuck this in the glove box. But I found another little thing. I've got a couple of these, so I'm gonna chuck one of these in with the car. It is a, who is the company? PCL, uh, tire tread gauge. So it allows you to find out what the uh, tread depth is on your car, on the tyres. Here's a handy little gadget, it is a PCL tyre tread depth gauge and this just allows you to find out how much tread you've got on your tyres. Now the Maestro tyres are going to be pretty good, they're fairly new, they've not had many miles put on them and the way they use it is you push the slider all the way in so the pin here is sticking out and this black piece wants to rest against the outside of the tread. So you push the, you put the pin in the deep part of the tread, slide it down until the black piece meets the outside of the tread and then see what your reading is. And on here it looks like we've got about six mil of tread there. You can see if you turn it round you've got seven and it's just below seven if we pull that up a tiny bit, you can see the 6mm line there. So that's plenty of tread on those. That's a neat little tool. It's not really one that I use, so I'm actually going to put this one in with the Maestro for the new owner to enjoy. And uh, it, it just seems appropriate to what this car is. I think for this, I was going to put it in one of the windows, but it's an exterior sticker. When I bought it, I wasn't sure which way around it was. So I'd have to put a, a backing on it to put it in the window and it, it might fade. So instead, I think I'm going to put it on the sun visor. On the inside, I can't put it on this side because of the fabric, but the inside's just vinyl. And I know from when I got my princess years ago that there was all kinds of football paraphernalia in it for Leeds United, if you're interested and uh, some things were on the back of the sun visors so that you saw them when you put the sun visors down. So that feels kind of appropriate for this car. And maybe the imaginary 
owner of this put this up here as a reminder for where their favourite station was and what preset to put it on. But let's go with that as a theory. That does not stick very well on there at all. Don't think that's going to work. Um, right then. <laughs> it's a bit too textured, unfortunately. I'll have a think and I'll see where else it might work. If this was smooth, that would have been a great spot for it. I channeled my inner 90s granddad and figured out what I would have done back then if I'd been given the wrong kind of sticker. Because bear in mind, you wouldn't have really been able to go on the internet and just get a new one. You just had to put it with what you've got and accept the mistake you made. And you would probably have some scotch tape or, in my case, some sellotape. Other sticky back plastics are available. And uh, I put some sellotape on the back of the sticker backing. So if you do want to peel this off later and use this as a sticker, you actually can. I haven't compromised the sticker. And then I went round the car to find somewhere it would actually fit. And uh, I decided on the top of the tailgate. It's if I went to the bottom of the tailgate, it interfered with the um, heater lines and I, I didn't really want to tape over those. But that looks just about right and just about like it's always been there. And that sellotape will brown and go manky and horrible, but that will just add to the effect. I think, for now, until I've found the spare ones of these that I'm sure I've got somewhere, that concludes this little round and the final round of the Dad Tat on the Maestro. We've got the lovely, lovely steering wheel in place. We've also got our sat nav, our security device, and the Weeple has just temporarily moved down here until I get this new dashboard in. Uh, to keep things legal, we've got our tax disc holder with our little notice in it. I love doing silly stuff like this. It's a bit of a nostalgia trip for me. I remember cars that were decked out like this when I was a kid, and they were just everywhere. Every person sort of over 50 seemed to have something like this with just accessories on it. Every time they'd gone to the motor factors, they'd pick up another little bit of something and pop it on the car. And you do see them occasionally now, but they're, they're much, much fewer and further between because, well, most people have cars on finance now and you can't really personalise to this degree. And this sort of thing, this sort of adding your own touch to a car with what is arguably plastic tat just isn't, isn't stylish, it's not fashionable, it's not desirable. Stick on chrome tat is maybe what we have now. But I do think it's important that you have fun with your project. You do silly things like this. You, you just explore the past in a different way. Not everybody in the 90s was trundling around in three litre capris. It, a very few people had that. Like, not everybody in the 80s had bright red Audi Quattros. We often see the world in these sort of TV versions of what the past was and I think it's just as interesting to explore this side of things what ordinary people were doing with their ordinary cars and just expressing themselves in their own particular way as it is the really exotic stuff or the fast stuff or the desirable stuff there's space for everybody <laughs>